Well, hi, everyone. Good to be with you. Just pulling up my Bible here on my computer. BibleGateway.com is what I use. There are a lot of good applications out there. Um, and many of them have concordances and commentaries and other Bible helps. So I would encourage you to find one if you need help doing that. I'd be happy to help you. Okay, so uh, UG. <laughs> We're getting into the nitty gritty and kind of the tough stuff of the kingdom of heaven. And we're in chapter 19 today. And let's see, we're going to look at the usage of Jesus' um, sayings, let's see, and way down in verse 12. So let me read first um, our text, and then we'll talk about it. And when I say nitty gritty, it's um, these are difficult teachings of Jesus, I think. Verse 19, when Jesus had finished saying these things, he left Galilee and went to the region of Judea, to the other side of the Jordan. Large crowds followed him, and he healed them there. So Jesus is on the, uh, in Transjordan, meaning uh, the east side of the river. Now he's moved over to the west side of the river uh, from Galilee and is making his way probably down to Jerusalem. Uh, that would be the normal passage. So when you cross over from the west side, to the, uh, from the east side to the west side up by Galilee, you cross into Judea. Now, some Pharisees, verse 3, came to test him. So we know right from the beginning that the Pharisees' hearts are not pure. Their motivation is not right. They're trying to capture Jesus. So they asked him, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? For any and every reason. Now, divorce laws in the first century were quite strict. And reasons or, I guess, accepted reasons for divorce were few and far between. Um, but the Pharisees think Jesus uh, liberal here. And so they're really asking to test Jesus to see if he would say, yeah, you, you could divorce for any and every reason. Uh, but Jesus knows better, doesn't he? And he's certainly smarter than the Pharisees, at least these ones. Verse four, haven't you read, he replied, that at the beginning, the creator made them male and female. And he said, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. So Jesus sets the stage. This is the ideal for what we would call today Christian marriage. In that day and age, we would call that godly marriage. Same difference. So Christian marriage. The ideal is that a man would leave his father and mother and marry for lifetime without divorce and then verse seven why then they asked did moses command that a man give his wife a certificate of divorce and send her away and under certain provisions um according to the law a man could do that we won't get wrapped up in all that today so G here's jesus reply moses permitted you to divorce your wives because your hearts were hard He's saying, because it wasn't the ideal, um, but we sin all the more, or we sin. But it was not this way from the beginning. I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, and marries another woman, commits adultery. So again, we talked yesterday, Jesus is setting a high bar, but keep in mind that Jesus is talking about very difficult expectations. In fact, I would suggest to you these expectations are uh, nay impossible to live up to. Two, Jesus is talking here also about Genesis in the very beginning, that from the beginning, and I would suggest to you perhaps uh, before chapter 3, Genesis chapters 1 and 2, that before chapter 3, the fall of humanity, this was the ideal, that we remain in a 
a loving monogamous, monogamous lifelong relationship with our spouses. Verse nine or verse 10. This, the disciples said to him, so now we're switching from the Pharisees to the disciples. So you can see this three-way dialogue, Pharisees, Jesus, and now the disciples, Jesus followers, we might say. If this is the situation between a husband and wife, it is better not to marry. And then here's Jesus' reply to the disciples. Not everyone can accept this word. What's this word? This uh, uh, this ability to live celibate, to not marry, but only those to whom has, it has been given. So it, it's uh, to not marry is a gift. Verse 12, for there are eunuchs who were born that way, and there are eunuchs who have made, who have been made eunuchs by others. So there are two types of literal eunuchs here. Number one, there are eunuchs who were born that way. What Jesus is getting at um, are those who um, are created, if you will, uh, impotent, those who are just um, unable to uh, produce children or reproduce. But he says there are also those, second group of eunuchs, who have been made that way. So, um, Men would be made into eunuchs if they were going to serve in a high court. Uh, we know this. And so someone else, the high court, has made them this way. So these are the two kind of groups of real eunuchs. But then Jesus says there's this third group of eunuchs, and there are those who choose to live like eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. That means there are those who choose to live celibate and without marriage. In the kingdom of heaven. Um, the one who can accept this should accept this. So a lot going on here. And really, this passage is not about divorce. <laughs> We've misinterpreted it to um, talk in those terms specifically. Really, this passage is about um, those who are called to live in the kingdom of God, to whom, number one, they have been granted this ability. Um, it has been given them by God. And two, they are celibate for the sake of the kingdom, meaning that they, they take their call to the kingdom of God, whatever that is in the kingdom of heaven. They take it seriously enough to put aside being married. So let's wrap this up here to the best of our ability. And I know this is tough teaching. Jesus is asked by the Pharisees, why are people divorcing in our day and age? And we might ask the same question. But Jesus says, the ideal is that they stay married. However, we live in a broken world and there is going to be divorce. We are sinners and saints, says Martin Luther. And so though Jesus sets a high standard and ideal, um, he still allows for sin and the payment of that sin. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 9, a uh, previous verse, as he quotes from Hosea 6 and verse 6, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, an acknowledgement of God rather than burnt offerings. Jesus says this to the Pharisees in chapter 9. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. You see, Jesus is and always sets a high bar for those who are in Christ Jesus. In fact, the highest bar here is for those who serve in the kingdom of God in whatever role, if they are given this gift, they should not marry. And by the way, Jesus stands as the example and the model there, and so does John the Baptist. They did not marry, but Paul does not. The apostle Paul 
married and was married. And the fact is that God calls some to marriage and others he calls to not marriage. So I want you to hear this clearly. If you are a divorced person in the kingdom of God, you get God's mercy and you receive God's grace. Your divorce is no greater a mar on you or sin than any of ours who are still married or who are not married. You are loved. You are welcome. You serve faithfully in the kingdom of God. And so we accept this tough teaching from Jesus, but we want to make sure we get it right. To the best of our ability, we are to live marriage without divorce, but sometimes circumstances, because we live in a broken world and we are sinful people, don't allow for that. And so receive God's grace and mercy in this time and know that you are equally loved by God and welcomed into his kingdom. We all are. And that's a gift indeed. So we pray, Lord God, thank you. Thank you that you encourage the best of us. And Lord, we are also grateful that when we fall and fail, and we do often, that you are right there to catch us. You desire mercy, not sacrifice. And you show us mercy, Lord. You distribute mercy. You pour out mercy upon us, and we are grateful for it. Help us, Lord, to know that the kingdom is, is quite the requirement, but that your grace is sufficient for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good to be with you, friends. Happy Wednesday to you. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.